Stony Brook has um, traditionally been a leader in material science. The department has expanded to study other material systems and included a very strong theoretical and computational core. More recently, the focus has switched to studying the problem of our generation, climate change. And even here, our study of surfaces and interfaces has turned out to be critical since they often determine the design of resilient material systems that can be used as climate solutions. We see ourselves tackling climate change in three broad areas, mitigation, adaptation, and sustainability. For mitigation, we are developing energy storage technology, materials that will enable nuclear fusion, and the infrastructure for a clean hydrogen economy. Energy storage is a key enabling technology but with electric vehicles. Two of the things that we're interested in are extending the driving range of a car. So we want to put more energy into the battery and so we're exploring new materials uh, such as silicon uh, used in the negative electrode. One of the other examples for electric vehicles is fast charge. We have a project where we've been investigating charging batteries repeatedly in 10 minutes or less. A second focus area of our research has to do with what I call scalable energy storage. How do we make batteries big? An additional area is considering materials that are environmentally benign Earth abundant and are low cost. All of that comes down to understand your materials properties and how they function. We have a very strong collaboration and part of the Brookhaven National Laboratory. Me and many of others in the department have joined appointment and in particular our group using a large synchrotron facility there. Uh, it's called National Synchrotron Light Source 2. The students at the beamline they are seeing the materials in front of eye, in front of their eyes that's changing in an unprecedented way that cannot possibly be done in any other means. One thing that uh, is very exciting for our group is um, our work at uh, the interface between artificial intelligence and uh, material science. In this method, we uh, found a relationship between an X-ray absorption spectrum and the uh, characteristics of the structure and it opens up opportunities for um, controlling the processes involving nanomaterials by design, on demand. My group specifically focuses on advanced uh, materials for next generation energy production, specifically in the uh, both fission and fusion space. So really at the intersection of functional and structural materials, where we are using unique ways, uh, focusing on interfaces and many times at the nanoscale uh, to uh, develop materials with properties that transcend traditional engineering materials. The students build that connection of, yes, fundamental science matters. Yes, our science is directly connected to making those technologies better. And it's incredible how these two things sort of um, interwoven and, and we see that every day in our research work. For adaptation, we are developing a new class of microbially derived biopolymers that can actually be used to strengthen coastlines and levees because you have these huge swings in temperature, right? And then so you have to deal with systems that were not designed to meet those swings. You know, it's roads, it's foundations, it's dams, it's levees. None of that was engineered to deal with these kinds of large sw swings in, 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 in weather, and also to deal with extreme weather events. So we are working actually with the Army Corps of Engineers to, uh, to solve those kinds of problems. We've been in polymers for a long time, began in petrochemicals and understanding the physics of petrochemical-based polymers. So our goal now is the synthesis of polymers that can completely replace the petrochemical polymers, as long as we have our eye on the goal, but using green methods for their synthesis. And for sustainability, we are actually developing the kinds of systems and processes that we need to enable waste upcycling and recycling in order to reduce our dependence on landfill. We are extremely conscious now about the entire life cycle of a product that we produce, from its inception down to the end of life. 
many of the challenges that we're taking on are large challenges. These are difficult questions that are very multidisciplinary. So we've found that collaboration and involving multiple people in the research process is absolutely critical to be able to address these large, important and complex questions. We also have very close ties with industrial partners. Um, we have a large industrial consortium that is part of the Center for Thermal Spray Research uh, in our department, which is a consortium of all the leading companies, and Stony Brook is, is really the center of that um, research effort. We need to find a way for the younger generation to achieve experiential learning. And that's what we're trying to do here. So we teach them. Our industry potential partners helped us set up some of this facility to make it easier, safe to do that so that they can actually push these buttons and, uh, and get them to uh, appreciate what complex manufacturing processes look like. We feel that we are educating the next generation of engineers to go out there, work in these large interdisciplinary teams, and be prepared to solve these challenges in the coming decades.